Hello, welcome. The goal in this video is to help you use GeoGebra to construct a triangle, in this case ABC, its perpendicular bisectors, which are these three lines here, and the circumcenter, where those bisectors meet, which is the center of the circumcircle, which wraps around your triangle ABC. And what's really wonderful about this construction is by doing it on something like GeoGebra, you can play around with the triangle and everything will change in the appropriate corresponding way. So no matter how I drag any of the points, all of these lines are still perpendicular bisectors. No matter how I change the triangle, I still have my circumcenter plotted and the circumcircle. And from I love this because uh, the centers of triangle are so fascinating. And like in this case, P is in the quote unquote middle of the triangle, which might feel like an intuitive middle. But let's say you go like this and change triangle ABC to a right triangle. Look at that middle moving. It's now on the hypotenuse, and then it's even here outside the triangle. How fascinating. So you can actually explore all kinds of surprises uh, by changing the construction, by moving the blue points. Those are the points that are able to move. Black points like this, or which are grayed out, are essentially based upon A, B, and C, so you can't like move them, and that's totally normal. So let's just go through this uh, step by step. So when you type in GeoGebra, this is probably the first screen you would get to. Make sure you sign in uh, so you can save your work. And you want to access your calculator by clicking on, I think, the, it's what's called the waffle over here. And there's a whole bunch of choices. We want the geometry choice. All right, so we can begin to do this. And the polygon A, B, C. There we go. Close it. There's our triangle. And we can start with our construction. So if I click more, there's a whole bunch of options here. And I'm just going to scroll down. Um, and I want the circle tool. Circle with center. Boom. There's a circle with the center. And I just dragged it out so I have this point D. And now I use the compass tool and go from D to center A. Boom. There it is. Now I have a copy of that circle. I dragged it over to B and clicked. And now I've got the intersection of those circles, which are the key to the perpendicular bisector. So I click on line. And if I hover over the intersection and click, uh, GeoGebra typically will jump to that meeting point that I want. So there we go. Now I have a perpendicular bisector, and I just want to click on point and add this point here so I can verify it. How do I do that? I go to measure an angle, and then click, click, click. So I clicked A to G to F at 90 degrees. And I can also click the measure tool. I think this is really cool for length. So from A to G, I have 4.8. And from G to B, I also have 4.8. So that's showing me that, okay, it's bisecting the segment into two equal pieces and it's perpendicular. So if I drag around this top point, see nothing's changing. Why? Because, well, AB is not changing, right? But if I drag around B over here, I change that bottom segment. No matter where I drag it, I notice I've got my angle that I want, sweet, and two equal measurements. Now this is kind of a mess, and I think the easiest way to start hiding stuff is to go over here and click Algebra, and don't be intimidated by this long list. What you can do is click on any of these things here to hide um, or show an object. These are all different objects. So for example, I want to keep the triangle it's the, and the segments. It's all this stuff right here, points A, B, and C. And then I have this point D. What is that? Well, if I click here, I can see where that is. That's this point here. I don't really need that. That was just a part of the circle drawing I had. And if I go here, I can see all of these labels and things. I don't need those anymore. I could leave it up there in case I want to test, but I don't need to see that. I don't need to see this circle or the compass tool there. I don't need F, right? Or E. I mean, you might you might disagree with me, but I don't think I need that. Now on G, I like that this point is showing personally. I just don't want the label. So here's G. If I click on more options and go to settings, I can hide the label. So I can go here. I don't want the label. I want to show the object, but not the label. And boom, it's gone. So I think this is a little bit cleaner, right? And also, I don't you know I don't really want these two things. Now, if I click on it and scroll down, it will also show me what the object is right here. So if I didn't, if I was a little intimidated by all the objects here, I can just hide it and hide it that way. And I can find it by clicking on the graph and then you can see it jumps to it over here. And then I just repeat that process over and over again. So go back to my tools. 
And this time I'll find the perpendicular bisector of AC. So I go to circle with center, boom, A, past the halfway point, got it. Now I go down to circles and compass. I want to copy that, click from H to A. I've got my compass tool. And now I've got a line at the intersection points, boom. Now I could test each time if I was feeling really nervous. I, I just think that's not necessary here. And then repeat the process between B and C. Okay, how do we do that? Circle with center, boom, past the halfway point, got it. And compass tool. Again, you wanna go from the point to the center and drag it over. And I know it's a little messy at this point, so I've gotta go back now and hide some things. Here's all those new things I just constructed, right? So for example, if I click on H, I can see where that point is. I don't want that. Um, I don't need this circle or this one. And now it's a little bit cleaner. I don't need point K. And I jump back over to tools, scroll up. All right. And I could use the point tool, but again, I just jump to the line and click on these two points and connect the dots. That is also a perpendicular bisector. So if I go back to algebra, I'm basically now done. I just hide the things that I don't think I need anymore. So for example, I is not so helpful for me. J, I don't need that. Okay, this perpendicular bisector, I wanna keep that. Okay, this circle, I don't need. This one, I don't need. L, goodbye, M, boom. Now, I've got everything I want, except I need my circumcenter, that point where these three things meet. Boom, mark that. And I'm gonna move the label over so I can see it. And then I need a circle, right? Now, each of these uh, lines that are perpendicular bisectors, they're a collection of all the points that are the same distance um, from the endpoints of the segment they bisect. So for example, that was a mistake. Um, on this perpendicular bisect right here, if I pick any point on the segment, for example, it's equidistant from B and C. Okay, but that's true anywhere on this bisector. So up here at this point, it would be the same distance from B and C. And you can see that very quickly if you just put a point on your line, take a circle, right, and then extend it. Look what it does. It crosses those two endpoints, right? So it has the same radius from, in this case, O to B and O to C. And that's true everywhere. So let's think about what that means. The points on these bisectors are equidistant from their corresponding endpoints of the segments, like this bisector is equidistant from B and C. This vertical one is equidistant every point from A and B. And every point on this perpendicular bisector is equidistant from A and C. What about N? That's on all three bisectors, right? So it's actually equidistant from all of the vertices. I can see this if I just drag my circle from the center to a vertex, and that's my circumcenter. And in the circumcircle, it crosses those vertices. Now you can mess around with this a little bit more. You can add points at intersections and angles like I did in the intro. Um, I can also go in, and if I wanna change like this, this is my circumcircle, and I wanna um, mess with it a little bit, I can go to settings and give it color. There's all kinds of things I can do uh, on the, um, I could fill it, excuse me, like this right here. I can do all kinds of stuff. You can also do that directly on uh, the graphing image here. So if you click on it, there's some nice options for color, right? You can color code your bisectors to whatever scheme you think makes sense and kind of clarify, because a lot of your diagrams would be somewhat complex. And it's really fun to explore and see what happens because now you have a dynamic model of the circumcenter, circumcircle, and angular bisectors. All right, I hope you enjoyed this.